Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to be working on the appearance of the water by having the colour depend on how deep the water is. Okay, so first things first, I'm on a different computer today, and something I noticed is that when I zoom out, I'm getting these strange artefacts in the different biomes, and what I realised is causing this is MIP mapping, which is essentially where a texture is scaled to multiple resolutions and sort of filtered a little bit so that when you're viewing the object from further away, it can use one of the lower resolution textures so that the details aren't quite as sharp. However, that is causing some havoc here, so I'd like to disable that. So I'm going to go into the color generator script, and here where we're creating the texture, I'll first of all specify a texture format. I'll just use RGBA32, and then for map mapping, I'll say false. Okay, next up, I'm going to open the color settings file, and here I want to create a gradient for the ocean color. Okay, so we can save that and go back to the color generator, and here we could create a separate texture for the ocean, but I think it's going to be simpler if we just store it in the first half of this texture. So I'm actually going to double the width of the texture, so make this texture resolution times 2, and then uh, the first half will be the ocean. So coming down to update colors, I first of all want this loop to now go up to text resolution multiplied by 2, and then we can say if i is less than text resolution, then we'll sample from the ocean gradient, otherwise we'll sample from the biome gradient. So above here, I'm just going to define this uh, gradient color variable that we're using, and then I'm going to uh, copy this, and inside there we can evaluate from the settings.oceanColor. Alright, otherwise uh, we will be getting our color from the biome gradient. Now, this inside here should be a value between 0 and 1, but in this case i is starting at a value of text resolution, so we should subtract text resolution from there, just like so. Okay, so now, as you may recall, in our shader we're reading from the texture based on the elevation of the vertices, but this is slightly problematic when it comes to the ocean, because we're clamping the vertices there to a minimum height so that we get this nice smooth surface, which means that we don't actually have any depth information for the shader to use to determine the color by. So uh, what we're going to do instead is store that information in the mesh UVs. Let's start by going to our noise filters, like the rigid noise filter and the simple noise filter. I'm going to open that up, and I want this to no longer clamp the value to be 0 or above, because we want to uh, know how deep the ocean goes. So I'll remove that there, and I'll also open up the simple noise filter and remove that clamp there. All right. And then let's go into the shape generator. And we're going to change this calculate point on planet method a little bit. First of all, I'll change the name to calculate unscaled elevation. And this is now going to return a float. And so we won't multiply it by the point on unit sphere. And I'm also not going to scale it by the planet radius. Then we can have a separate method, also returning a float. I'll call this get scaled elevation. This takes in a float for the unscaled elevation. And here, I first of all want to clamp the unscaled elevation to be uh, equal or greater than zero. So I'll say mathf.max between zero and the unscaled elevation. And then we can scale this by the planet radius by saying elevation is equal to settings.planet radius multiplied by one plus the elevation and then we can just return that value. All right, so let's now go into the terrain face class, and in the construct mesh method, we can have a float unscaled elevation equal to shape generator dot calculate unscaled elevation, and then uh, we can say that the vertices with an index of i is equal to point on unit sphere multiplied by shape generator dot uh, get scaled elevation, passing in the unscaled elevation. All right, now we want to set the UVs. 
So UVI, I want to set its y-axis. Remember, we were using the x-axis of the UVs for the biomes. So I'll set that to the unscaled elevation. Now, we do want to be sure when we're creating these UVs that they actually have the right size. Uh, they could be wrong if we're changing the resolution of the planet. So in parentheses here, I'll say that if mesh.uv.length is equal to uh, the vertices array length, then it's the right size and we can just uh, use mesh.uv as our starting point. Otherwise, we want to set it to a new vector2 array that has the length of the vertices array. All right. Now, the other thing we need to be careful of is coming down to this update UVs method. Uh, here, we're currently assigning a new vector2 to the UVs, which will be overwriting any information we provide over here. So instead of doing that, I'll just say uv with an index of i dot x is equal to uh, color generator dot biome percent from point, like so. Okay, and then let's also just up here set the new UVs equal to the existing UVs so that we're not overwriting that either. Okay, I'll save that and go into Unity. And I'm going to just regenerate the planet quickly. And then you can see it's all messed up at the moment because we need to update the shader. But I'm going to quickly go onto the ocean color gradient here and just set this to a nice dark blue uh, at the base coming up to a light blue along the shore, uh, just something like that. All right, and then I'll open up the planet shader. So as I was saying earlier, we're currently using the uh, positions of the vertices to ultimately sample from the texture, but we now instead want to use the elevation data stored in the UV channel. So I am going to delete those two nodes and now to uh, read from the UV channel, we do have this UV input node, but uh, to try and keep this graph at least a little bit organized, I'm going to move that over there and actually just create a new UV input up here. And I'm going to split this so that I can get just the Y component that I want. And now uh, what I want to try get is a value that goes from zero at the base of the ocean uh, sort of at the lowest point I'm in, to one at the shoreline. So in order to do that, we're going to need to go from the minimum elevation to zero. So let me just delete this connection here and have a value of zero there. That's the height at the shore. And then we'll use the elevation as the time. And that should give us that. So just to visualize this quickly, let's drag that into the color output, save this, and I'll quickly add a new tab here for the game view. And this looks roughly how I'd expect with these dark regions sort of in the ocean here, and then coming up to pure white at the shoreline and above. Okay, now going back to the shader, we want another value that goes from zero at the shoreline to one at the uh, peak of the highest mountain. So let's create another inverse lap node. This is going to go from zero to the maximum elevation. And once again, we'll pass in the uh, actual elevation over there. And to visualize this, let me drag that into the color, save the asset and go into the game view. And here we can see we've got that. All right, now remember that our texture is split into two parts. The first half is the ocean and the second half is the land. So I want this value, uh, which is for sampling from the land to go from 0.5 to one, and the value that's for sampling from the ocean to go from zero to 0.5. So uh, let me quickly first just delete these connections since those are just cluttering things up at the moment. And then I'm going to drag this into a lap node where uh, that goes into the time slot. And I should go from 0 to 0.5. And then I'll drag this into another lap node. And this will go from 0.5 to 1. OK. Now I ultimately want to add these two together, like so. 
and then drag this into the uh, X component of the UV that will be sampling the texture, but I want this to have a weight of zero if we're currently above the shoreline, in which case this should have a weight of one, or if we're below the shoreline then this should have a weight of one, and this should have a weight of zero. So the way we could do that is by taking this value here and flooring it, which is to say rounding it down, and now if I just drag this into the color output and save this, you'll see that what we get is a black, or a value of zero, in the oceans, and white, or a value of one, in all the land regions. So, we can take this and do a multiplication with this value here, pass that into the add there, and then we'll take 1 minus this value and use that to do a multiplication with this. Pass that in there. And this is getting a little scruffy, so let me just tidy this up. And now I will uh, drag the color from the texture into the output node there and try saving this, go into the game, and here you can see we've got the gradient for our ocean and also the gradient for the land. Alright, now the last thing I'd like to do this episode is just allow the water to reflect the sun a little bit more, and we can do this by increasing the smoothness of the master output here, but I don't want that to affect the land, so uh, we have this node here, which if we just look at the output of this quickly, this is giving us a value of 1 for the ocean, so we can use that as a mask. So let's go back onto the shader, and I'm going to add a vector1 property here, which I'll call the smoothness, and then I'm just going to do a multiplication uh, with this mask value here and the smoothness property and then I'll pass that into the smoothness of the output here. And let me just put this back. All right, so we can now save that, go uh, into Unity, so let me close that, and on the planet material, we now have the smoothness property, and you can see if we increase that, the water is now reflecting the sun, but over the land, uh, it has no effect. All right, I'm just quickly going to play with my water gradient a little bit. So I'll go into the planet, and I'll just speed this up as I fiddle with the ocean color for a minute, but I think that's looking kind of nice. The one thing that I still need to do is go onto the uh, biomes here and just remove the ocean color from each of these gradients. So I'll delete that there, go into this one, delete that, and uh, this last one as well. Alright, that is everything for this episode, so until next time, cheers!